Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be another Poshmark video. If you're new here, my name is Hannah and I've been a part-time clothing reseller on the Poshmark app for about nine months now. I started reselling in January of 2020. Recently, I really liked making Poshmark related videos because I feel like using the app and reselling in general has this massive learning curve to it. And I learned pretty much everything I know based on other people's YouTube videos that I found super helpful. Even though I started this channel for more personal reasons and just wanting to like have a video record of some exciting things that are coming up in my life. I've loved making Poshmark videos because I think that they're really helpful for people that are brand new to Poshmark, brand new to reselling, and I really just enjoy sharing some things that I've learned in the past nine months when it comes to Poshmark. A few weeks ago, I posted a video of 10 mistakes that new resellers make, things that I did myself, sometimes still continue to do. <laughs> and this video is sort of the flip side of that. So the first video was things you should not be doing <laughs> if you wanted to make sales, and this video is things you should be doing to promote sales, especially in slow times. I also have a lot of ideas for upcoming Poshmark related videos in the future. I'm actually doing kind of a little experiment right now. It's a month long experiment and I'm going to do a video basically talking about if the hours that I put into this Poshmark side hustle are actually worth it and how much money I actually make on Poshmark doing it as a part time kind of hobby side hustle thing. So if that sounds interesting to you, be on the lookout for that coming soon. So I have a list on my phone of 10 things that I like to do when Poshmark sales are pretty slow for me. And what this means is I have like one or two or three days in a row that I'm not making sales. Some personal statistics about my closet are that I usually have anywhere between 100 and 120 active listings at any given time. I also list new items every single week, somewhere between 15 and 20 new items. So I always got this continual rotation of things going in and out of my closet. And I usually make at least one sale a day, if not two. So for me, slow on Poshmark means that there's just a break in that consistency of sales where I have a few days where I haven't made any at all. And this list is a combination of 10 strategies that can either help promote sales in the short term, something you can do right now to hopefully make a sale, and also things that you can do to be revamping and improving your closet to get more attention and more traction and more sales in the long run. So let's just get into it. All right, so tip number one, this is super obvious and I'm just gonna get it out of the way. I feel like I have to say it because it is honestly the most important. That is share your closet. So if you are selling on Poshmark, you know this, okay? This is not new to you. But if there's any newbies out there, sharing your closet just means going through and sharing all of your listings to your followers. What this also does is it puts it to the top of the search results. Ultimately, this is the most important thing you can be doing right this minute. While you're watching this video, go pick up your phone, share your closet while you're watching. It's the most effective thing you can be doing to get your listings in front of the eyes of potential buyers. So if you're sharing your listings, they're going to the top of search and whoever out there right now is searching for that specific brand or style is gonna come across your listing because you've just shared it. Personally, I share my closet around 10 to 15 times a day, which sounds just... <gasps> insane, but you have to keep in mind, I'm super part-time and I have a very reasonable number of listings in my closet at any given time, so it doesn't take me that long to share. I typically share once an hour on the hour from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And here's a little bonus tip. If you have an iPhone or an iOS device, you can use Safari to share your closet. It is literally three times faster than sharing on the app itself. Maybe right here in the video somewhere, I can put a comparison of how long it takes on Safari versus how long it takes on the app. Because on the app, there's this little, lag time, right? It has the little spinning wheel of death and then it shows a little shared notification before you can click on anything else and it's super irritating. <laughs> so last night I actually timed myself sharing every listing in my closet, first on Safari, which took me two and a half minutes, and then on the app, which took me almost eight minutes. It's just painful. So anyway, if you're looking to save yourself a little bit of time sharing, do it on Safari or on a desktop. I think a desktop is just slightly slower than Safari. It goes like Safari, desktop, app. It's pretty irritating that the app is so significantly slower than the other methods, but we can get around that. So that's tip number one, share your closet. Get those listings in front of potential buyers. It's the most obvious tip. Okay, so the next three tips I have have to do with sort of revamping your closet, revamping your listings, making them the most appealing and the most searchable. So if you're having a slow day, these are things that you can do to just kind of improve the quality of the shopping experience for potential buyers in the future. Number two is just to improve your listing descriptions and your listing titles. So this sounds kind of obvious again, but I was shocked when I learned kind of the correct way to optimize your listings. And then I went back and I looked at my own and they were just completely not searchable 
comfortable at all. This is something that I did probably around April when of course I had a lot of free time on my hands as I'm sure a lot of others did. And so I was just finding ways to kind of like refresh the listings that I already had. And the first thing I did is I worked on all of my listing descriptions. So an example of something that I had before, it could be like, blue v-neck t-shirt great condition and it's just like how's someone gonna find that <laughs> so a couple quick suggestions for this tip number one could be to use every single character in the title that is available to you so if you were given what is it 40 characters 50 characters use every single one put as many keywords in the title as you possibly can nobody is gonna find your listing if you have American Eagle jeans someone might find your listing if you have American Eagle black high-rise distressed jeggings do you see what I mean and use the description box to expand on what you couldn't fit in the title. I don't like to get super wordy, but one thing that I love to do is I love to put kind of a tag section or a keyword section at the bottom of my listing. And this is where I'll put any sort of relevant keywords to that specific item. So let me find an example of this and I'll put it on the screen right here. I sell a lot of activewear in my closet and all of my activewear tags are pretty similar. So for example, I have this Lululemon tank top in my closet right now. And in my little section about the item itself, it just tells the style of the tank top. It gives the color. It gives a little bit about the features like it has a built-in sports bra, it has a mesh razor back detail, and it gives a style number. Then at the bottom in the tags, I'll put workout, athletic, athleisure, cardio, running, hit, yoga, Pilates, comfy, comfortable, trendy, all these things that aren't specific to this tank top in itself, but they make that item more searchable for someone who is looking for a comfortable, trendy workout tank top for Pilates. Even though the person typing those things into the search bar didn't say anything about Lululemon style whatever, hopefully your listing will still come up in their search because your listing includes all of those specific tag words. In addition, always, always, always include something about the condition of the item. But if there is a stain, if there's pilling, if there's some wash wear, make sure to include that because you could get into some pretty messy situations if the buyer receives something that they feel was not in the condition that you stipulated in your description. Number three has to do with measurements. I've talked about this in, I think, two other Poshmark videos already, so this might be a repeat if you've already watched those, but measurements are super important because it gives the buyer a little bit of confidence shopping your closet, knowing that it's absolutely going to fit them. You cannot return things on Poshmark based on size or fit. So if you're a buyer, you wanna make sure that what you're about to spend your money on is actually gonna fit you when you receive it. I feel like as a buyer that is super important. So something you can do today to improve your listings is go through and add all of those measurements in. It also makes it easier for buyers to shop your closet if they come across something that they just love and they can see the measurements, they know it fits them and they can just outright buy it or they can send you an offer right then and they don't have to go through the effort of asking you for the measurements and waiting for a response and potentially losing interest. This is a little extra tip of something that I do with my measurements that I just started doing about two months ago. This is pretty recent. So up until then, I was including my measurements in the listing description and that is completely fine You can absolutely do that But a little problem that I was personally running into is that sometimes I wasn't sure if I could articulate in the description where I was getting that measurement from so for example sleeves always got me because I think the proper way to measure a sleeve is from the center of the back all the way down to the cuff but I only knew that because I looked it up. So I, I wondered if people were thinking that my sleeve measurement meant from like the neckline down or the seam down. So what I started doing instead of just measuring it on my own and putting it in words, I would actually lay down my tape measure onto the item itself in the flat lay photos. And I would take a picture of exactly where my tape measure was at. And actually this is kind of a win-win situation because what I would do is I would take the photos all at once in kind of like a batch work situation. And then I would go to list them and then I'd be pulling all those things out again and laying them down again and then measuring and then typing it in so by just adding that little step right into the photographing it just made it so much easier and now buyers can feel super confident that they know exactly where I'm getting my measurements from number four also has to do with photographing and that is re-photographing so back in March you know I'd been a few months into this whole reselling thing and I'd kind of gotten some better lighting options and some better backdrop options and so once I started improving the quality of my photos on new listings then my old listings just kind of looked old, I guess. <laughs> you could tell that the quality was not quite there from the things that I had posted right at the beginning versus a few months in. You could definitely see a discrepancy in the quality of the photos. So what I did one day in March, oh my goodness, it was the longest day of my life. But I went through and I re-photographed every single thing in my closet. At that point, I think I only had probably like 50 things. So it was like it was manageable for a one day task. But I would highly consider even just a group of listings that are sort of stale and they're not getting much attention. But just focus 
focus on those and re-photograph those, get them in some better lighting, maybe consider putting them on a mannequin or hanging them up or modeling them or something to kind of show off the item in a different way. Number five, which also sounds super obvious, but just hang with me, is sending offers to likers. So this is a great feature that Poshmark has. I love offers to likers. Basically, anybody who's ever liked your listing, you can go ahead and send them an offer. You can choose from 10, 20, or 30%, or you can pick your own amount plus a shipping discount, and it gets sent out to anybody who's ever liked it, and they get a little notification, hopefully kind of incentivizing them to run out and buy it. So I wanna share kind of my personal offer to liker strategy, and I would love if anybody has any other ways of doing it to leave it in the comments so that we can all look at them. I've tried what feels like everything, but what I found to be super helpful for me is to send them out within 24 hours of the person liking the item. There's absolutely benefits and downsides to this. I can see both absolutely. A long time ago, I used to send out offers like once a week, once every two weeks, which resulted in like absolutely no sales for me. And my theory as to why that is, is maybe they were on the app shopping around, they saw your item, they're like, oh, that's really cute, I kind of want that. But then by the time two weeks goes by, maybe they forgot about it, maybe the money that they had planned to spend on Poshmark has now gone towards something else or something like that. If they've waited upwards of two weeks and they're still not really interacting with that item or sending you an offer or showing any more interest in anything from your closet, chances are, they're not really feeling that sense of urgency to like run out and buy it from you. What I've also tried in the past is sending out offers immediately. And I mean like it shows 45 seconds ago, so-and-so liked your item and I am on it and I am sending them an offer, which I've heard pros and cons about that. Yes, they're on the app, they're active and whatever. And like you can maybe catch them in an impulse buy, but ultimately it feels kind of pushy to me. It feels like a little bit like, hey, I saw you liked this. Can I sell it to you? So for me, Honestly, 24 to 48 hours, sometime pretty recently after they've liked it is in my opinion, the most ideal to send them that offer. I like to send out offers once or twice a day, usually in the morning and then once in the afternoon, right around when people are getting off of work, the app seems to be kind of busy at that time. And that's when I found the most success with people actually taking me up on my offer. Number six, this is funny. I have SEND in all caps, actually good offers. <laughs> so once again, this is kind of a, a trial and error situation for me. I used to go through every now and then and send out 10% offers on everything. If nobody took, I'd send out 20. If nobody took, I'd send out 30. And eventually it's like, I've sent these people three offers and they're still not interested. So at that point you're kind of stuck. Like, what do you do? In my personal experience, I've had next to no sales on a 10% discount offer. So my point in saying sending an actually good offer, send something that's eye-catching and do it so that they're kind of like, oh my gosh, that's, that's a really good discount and they click on the notification, they're all the more tempted to buy it. What I felt like was happening is I would send a 10% and they're like, nah, not good enough. 20% and they're like, oh, okay, she's willing to like continually discount this for me. So they don't take on the 20. Then I send a 30 and they're like, how low can't she go? So nobody's taking me up on the 30 because clearly I'm just willing to send out all of these increment offers every so often. So for me, that wasn't a particularly good strategy. So now what I do, here's my secret. If you ever shop my closet, if you like something from me, I always send out 20% off with a discounted shipping. And that's sort of my baseline. Some things, some things that's kind of a stretch for me, I'm not super happy about sending 20% off, but other things I'm like, that's that feels reasonable, or maybe I could even go a little bit lower if they countered back, things like that. So it all evens out in the end. But what I feel like this does and why I feel like that shows some kind of success is if somebody likes something and then a couple days later, I'm like, hey, would you like 20% off in discounted shipping? It's sort of like exciting. Like, oh, okay, like that's decent. Like that's a pretty good discount. And they're not maybe sure if they're gonna come by a discount like that again. So they take you up on it. Like I said, that's my personal experience, my personal opinion. I think sending like an actually decent significant discount will result in more sales versus you just sort of dropping the price here and there continuously. Number seven, this one's a big one and I'm probably not gonna spend too much time in this video because I could literally make an entire video specifically on this strategy. It has to do with closet clear out. So I know it's kind of fun to like make fun of closet clear out because they happen so often. They happen several times a week. So to some people it can kind of look like the significance of it being a closet clear out day is really diminished because they happen so often. If you're not familiar with Closet Clear Out, it's basically just a promotion that Poshmark runs every so often, like I said, a few times a week, where if you use the price
price drop feature on your listings, not offers to liker, but you actually drop the price on the listing itself. Poshmark will send a notification to anybody who's liked that item and say that Poshmark is gonna be covering that shipping discount for the next six hours. This is great for you as a seller because you can drop the price on your item and Poshmark covers that discount. You don't have to include it in your offer. And the notification that pops up for those likers is pretty enticing as well. It says price just dropped. And then it's like, get it now for the next six hours. So like, it's pretty incentivizing for someone to like get that notification and feel this sense of urgency. So if it's a slow sales day for you, I would highly consider utilizing closet clear out. If it also happens to be a closet clear out day, maybe going through and dropping prices on things that are stale. Like I said, I have a very specific method for closet clear out. And those are the days that I actually make the most sales. So I'm always disappointed when it's not a closet clear out day because I'm like, ah, sales are going to be slow today. But if you want me to make a whole video on closet clear out and my specific strategy, let me know. But for the purposes of this video, it can be a great thing to do when you've had kind of a dry spell with the sales, go through and drop some prices. Everybody will get that notification and hopefully someone will bite at it. Number eight is to go through and send personal messages to the people who have shown interest in your items. So this just means to communicate with potential buyers, communicate with people who have liked your items or added your items to a bundle and things like that. Unfortunately, Poshmark doesn't have like a little messaging feature, but you can leave comments on bundles, which is the way to get around that. So here's what I like to do. And once again, take it with a grain of salt because my closet is relatively small. I don't get a ton of likes in a day. So this is super manageable for me to do. But whenever I'm sending an offer to someone, I will always follow that person. I will go to their bundle. I'll add that item that they liked to their bundle and I'll leave them a little comment. And I'll say something along the lines of like, hey, thanks for checking out my closet. I just sent you a discount. Let me know if you have any questions. I feel like people are more likely to respond to things like that than they are to just getting a notification about an offer that you sent. And what happens if they have their notifications turned on for Poshmark, they're gonna get a notification that you followed them. They're gonna get a notification that you added something to their bundle. They're gonna get a notification that you commented and they're gonna get a notification that you sent them an offer. So that's four things that are popping up on their screen all from you. And it's sort of like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, who is this person? And so they're tempted to open it up and they're like, oh, okay, she added to my bundle and sent me a discount and whatever. And more often than not, people ignore it and that's okay. But sometimes they'll comment back and say, thank you so much. And then they'll accept it or they'll go through and they'll like other things because they know that you're an active and responsive and communicative seller. So if it's a slow day for you, you can go through and send this message to anyone who's liked anything that day. If it's a really slow day and you've got a lot of time on your hands, you can go through all your listings and send out a message to all your likers. The messaging is a big part of my closet clear out strategy as well. So especially if they like something on a closet clear out day, I'm pretty quick to go and message them and ask them if they're interested in my offer that I have for them. Number nine is also a massive part of just using Poshmark in general, and that is to be listing or relisting. So specifically, tip number nine is to relist five items. I've heard this magic number five before from other people on Instagram and YouTube and things like that. And I don't know if there's any merit to it, but I really do feel like if you are listing consistently at least five items a day or relisting five items a day, your closet is active. And what happens is anytime you list something, it goes to the just in category, which is in kind of a special category that a lot of people filter by. So by having several things from your closet that are in the just in category every single day, I feel like that just inherently brings more traction to your closet. So if it's been a while since you made a sale, maybe go through your closet and reassess what you've got and see what you've already sent out your maximum offer on. See what is kind of stale, what's old, what's not getting any attention, things like that. And just copy over all the photos and the description. If they're quality photos and a quality description, this is a great opportunity to kind of tweak those things as well. Just copy them over, create a fresh new listing, delete that old one, and hopefully that'll get some more traction, more fresh eyes on your closet. Personally, I list or relist five things every every single day. And I feel like that gives me a pretty consistent rotation of just new people coming in and out and looking at everything that I've got for sale. And finally, number 10, if things are just really slow for you and they've been slow for a long time, maybe it might be appealing to you to run some kind of sale. I've run three pretty successful sales in the past nine months. And in all of these sales, I've gotten rid of at least 10% of my total inventory. So for me in the size of my closet, that means anywhere between 10 and 15 items I've sold in like 48 hours, which for me is kind of unreal 
deal that never happens on just a normal day. But if you have some sort of sale or promotion going on, it's really, really attractive to potential buyers. I've also thought about making this a complete video all on its own, so I won't get too into it right now, but there's all kinds of sales you can run. You can run a two for 20, three for 30, buy one, get one free, 50% off everything. You know, like you can run all kinds of sales. There's tons of ideas out there, but ultimately if you're just feeling a little bit stagnant in your Poshmark business and it's not really gaining any activity or attention, it feels really good to just purge a lot of that inventory, maybe for a little bit less than what you were hoping to get for it, but at least things are moving and at least you're making some sales and the money isn't sitting on Poshmark now, it's in your pocket now. I don't run sales too often because honestly they are a lot of work and I can get into that in a different video all about how to run a sale, but this idea always kind of comes to me during these slow periods where I've had a few days of no sales and I've had some more downtime and I'm just really looking to get rid of a whole lot of inventory. All right, and that is it for this video. I feel like it was probably really long. So if you stuck around to the end, I appreciate you, thank you. I hope these tips were helpful. If you are new to Poshmark or you're thinking about signing up for Poshmark, you can use my code. It's Hannah's Closet 12 and you get $10 off your first purchase on Poshmark, which I think is awesome. I also get $10, which is also awesome. <laughs> but it's just a little way for you to get some free money and to support me, which I really appreciate, so thank you. And like I said before, I have a lot of Poshmark content that I want to be filming pretty soon, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like because it really supports me and my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video real soon.